Hi everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to share with you three sweet DIY room decor ideas for spring. The first DIY I'm going to show you is how to make a tray from a shadow box. Now this is not my idea, this was one of my subscribers ideas when she saw this shadow box, Hannah Hunt. So thank you Hannah for this idea and I hope you love how this turned out. So this shadow box was only $5 at Hobby Lobby. I took the backing off and then I traced it onto this project paper that I found in the clearance aisle at Joanne. I just love the floral print on this project paper and then I put some Mod Podge onto the backing. It's just a chipboard or MDF sort of backing and I just made sure to coat the entire thing and then I smoothed the, the piece of project paper that I cut out right on top of that backing. Once that was completely dry, I took some more matte Mod Podge and I applied it to the top of the project paper. I made sure to go over the entire piece. And then once that was completely dry, I put the backing back in this shadow box frame. I put all of the tabs down and realized it was not going to be strong enough to be a tray. So I took some wood screws and my drill and I just screwed in all of the sides. So in the middle of each of the sides and I put a screw in all the corners of the frame just to make sure that the backing was held down really nicely and it was attached firmly so that when I put things in my tray, it would not drop out. And this shadow box was on sale and the Hobby Lobby clearance aisle because it didn't have glass in it, which was perfect for this project. So thanks again, Hannah, for this idea. Then I took out the little hanging pieces on the back of this uh, shadow box and then I flipped it around. I found these pulls at Home Depot. They're only around $3 Canadian. They're in the utility hardware section. So you'll find them where you find things like hinges and garage elements and things like that. I like them because they look sort of industrial, but of course I love the beautiful brass color of them. Then I just measured where they were centered on either side of my tray and I screwed them into the side of my tray with my drill and some screws. And I really love how these look with the feminine paper and I like how they contrast with the driftwood color of this frame. So I put one handle on either side of my frame and that was it. That's how I made this really simple tray from the shadow box and it only cost me around $12. So this would be really cute for breakfast in bed. It's also cute just for random items on your coffee table, like a book, some florals, a napkin. And I think it would just be a really sweet part of your spring decor this year. And you could also use things like wrapping paper and scrapbook paper instead of this project paper. There's so many options. The next DIY I want to show you is a really sweet spring throw blanket. So I found this sweater knit fabric at Joanne and it wasn't very expensive. I believe it was only around $8 a yard. I folded it in half and then I folded it in half again and cut off any of the excess to make sure that it was nice and even. So the part, the side that I cut off, the raw side, I'm going to fold it up an inch and then another inch. So I'm just using my ruler and some pins to fold it properly and then to pin it in place. So the selvage edge, I'm just going to leave that because that's not going to come unraveled. That's a sort of finished in its own way. I'm just folding up either side where I cut. And when you're working with any sort of knit fabric, it's really important that you pin it lots because it's quite stretchy and can tend to move around a bit. Then I use my sewing machine and a zigzag stitch to sew my hem in place. So I'm using the fattest zigzag stitch, the widest zigzag stitch, and the longest length uh, on my stitch here and that's going to work well with my sweater knit fabric and when you're sewing sweater knits make sure not to pull on the fabric you don't want it to stretch you just kind of gently push it through your machine and I think the hem turned out really nice it looks substantial and it looks great for what I want to do here with it I found this pom-pom yarn at Joanne as well and then I'm taking some more stick pins and marking every two inches along the hems that I made on either side of my blanket then I'm taking a needle and thread and I'm doubling the thread on my needle. I'm cutting off any excess string off of my first pom-pom on my yarn. And then I'm taking my needle and thread and I'm putting it through that hem that I created. And then I'm putting it through uh, the middle of, kind of in right in between two of the pom-poms, right through that string, just like this. So you don't wanna go under the string, you wanna go kind of right through that string just to make sure that your pom-poms are nice and secure. 
So again, putting the needle, the needle all the way through, kind of in that hem that I created, pulling it out whenever I see a pin. And then I'm putting it in the middle of that string between the two pom-poms. So basically I'm just creating my own sort of pom-pom trim with this pom-pom yarn. Here's a close up so you can see how I'm attaching this pom-pom yarn. So you're going to go along like this until you run out of thread and then make a nice loop and a nice knot and then you can add on some more thread on your needle if you need to continue. So this is a bit time consuming but you can do it while you're watching Netflix or whatever. It's quite relaxing and I think the finished effect is very cute. And I only used maybe a quarter to a third of my ball of pom-pom yarn to make this so it was a really good use of material I thought. When you're finished at the end of your hem, just make a really firm knot, cut off any excess thread, and then cut off right at the edge of the pom-pom. Take out all your pins, repeat on the second side if you want, and you are finished your beautiful spring blanket. I love the soft blush color of this blanket. I really like the geometric pattern, and this DIY pom-pom trim takes the cake. I think it just brings it to a really sweet, cute level. It's nice and lightweight, but I think this would also work well into fall if you wish. The final DIY I wanna show you today for spring is a hoop wreath with some fabric flowers. And I've only made maybe one other hoop wreath. I really like them, they look quite modern. So I took an embroidery hoop and I'm painting it with some leftover paint I had on hand in this beautiful blue, green, gray color. So basically I divided the hoop into the two parts and painted it. Once it was fully dry, I took this wired burlap ribbon, I believe this is two inch wide ribbon, and I'm putting it in between the two hoops and pulling it tight. And I'm putting it about a third down from the top, then tightening my hoops together. And then I'm trimming off the excess, leaving about two inches extra on each side. And then I'm folding it in half and cutting it at an angle to create a cute little sort of pennant style edge on either side of the ribbon. I found this metal welcome sign at uh, the Dollar Tree last fall. If you don't have something like this, you could um, just leave the words out or do something different there. I liked the look. And then I took some fabric flowers that I made. I will leave the tutorial for these fabric peonies in the description box below. It's one of my most favorite uh, videos and most popular videos here on YouTube. They're really fun to make. If you don't want to make fabric flowers, you could just purchase some silk peonies or flowers, whichever flowers you want from your favorite store. And then I took this faux lamb's ear. I found this at Michael's a few years ago. I'm just trimming it with some wire cutters. Um, I like groups of three, so I put three flowers and three leaves on either side of the flowers, and I'm just gluing them in place with a glue gun. And just kind of experimenting and, you know, looking at the wreath from different angles and deciding where I want to glue any more leaves. So I just tucked a couple single leaves on either side of the flowers uh, in the interior of the hoop and the exterior. And just kind of kept looking at it and gluing and moving until I was happy with the final look of this wreath. As a finishing touch, I took some twine. I found this twine at Dollar Tree, very inexpensive. You can use it for so many things. And I'm just wrapping it around the top of this wreath. I wanted to hide that hardware on top that the embroidery hoop has. So I just took a glue gun, tacked the rope down, and I'm just wrapping it around the top of the wreath like this, and then gluing it in place at the end and trimming it. And here's how my spring hoop wreath turned out with the embroidery hoop and the fabric flowers. I think this looks romantic, it looks sweet, it has a little bit of a modern farmhouse look as well. It would look cute on your front door and it would be a welcome addition to any spring home. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed these spring room decor DIY ideas. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY decor and lifestyle videos. And I'll see you all again in my next video. Bye.